Welcome to another tutorial folks. Today I am showing you how to paint the plastic Falsham Jaegers from Flames of War. These are the thermoplastic ones. Uh, now they've all been prepared with a sharp uh, hobby knife. You need a sharp knife to remove the, the all the little lines that, that to be honest are not too bad at all um, but there's always going to be some lines somewhere that you need to remove and if your blade is not sharp you're going to gouge or you're going to find the, the bits of soft plastic just sticking so sharp knife and you're good to go but watch those fingers folks now the whole thing was undercoated with German camel black brown in my usual style and now what I'm doing is applying the base coat for the camel this is a uh, German camel beige World War II now I don't have to worry too much about leaving the shade you know if you're familiar with my approach you know I leave the German camel black brown shade uh, nice and nice and clear lines to provide the, the depth to the figure but because we're doing a three-tone camel here we don't have to worry too much at this stage about trying to preserve that we'll just preserve it where we can and then fix what we need to fix so you can see me moving around the figure remembering to go all the way around things like arms don't just paint the bit you can see lift the figure move it around go under and go over sometimes you'll notice that you've missed a bit of flash something you didn't see before you might only see it once you've started painting but at this stage take a minute to get all those little problem areas for a nice clean finish in the description you will see an alternative uh, colour palette for the camouflage I find these large units, especially Falsham Jaeger where everybody's got the exact same kind of uniform on the exact same style of camouflage is you get a bit more of a varied look if you change the colours a little bit now that the base for the camouflage is in place we're going to use Panzer Aces Splinter Blotches 2 to create the, the brown camouflage blotches I always start with the brown because that's the most dominant colour try not to overlap on uh, connected pieces of fabric you know that like a, an arm and the shoulder uh, the collar and uh, the chest because these are not going to be made from the same piece of material it's a small point but it can add a bit to the finish and then when you're painting these blotches on you want to do angular blotches sometimes with a little line drawn away from the blotch or two angular blotches together it takes a bit of practice to get the muscle memory right but that is as close as you need to get at this scale to splinter camouflage what you don't want to be doing is filling it up with lots of basically rounded blotches because the camouflage isn't rounded and this might take a little bit more time but it will give you the right balance in the finished look the green blotches are Panzer Aces Italian tank crew the important thing to remember here is that the green is an accent to the brown it shouldn't dominate and what you can do is you can to get the right shapes you can eat into the brown a little bit you know if you if you can get a more angular kind of finish but I typically place the green blotches beside the brown and once again to get the right balance make sure you're leaving plenty of that base colour it's quite bright to begin with but the more you add in the way of camo the less bright it's going to be and even the more you add in the way of other colours around it the darker it's going to get so be careful to get the right balance and keep these blotches in the appropriate kind of level and scale now that the camel pattern is on we have to tidy up around the edges around equipment around straps and such likes and put that shade back in that has been lost and um, that we would normally follow in this this technique we would normally leave that shade in there but when you're painting a complex camel you don't want to be working around that we're going to fix it now and I use a couple of brushes for this a very thin one to finish and that's going to cut into the deepest area of shades going to paint hems on the bottom for instance of the, the camouflage top I'm going to speed things up now because this is us into a bit more familiar territory if you've seen my other videos 
Now there's a link to a video at the end where I paint a Fallschirm Jaeger using the alternative um, camel scheme. The details of the paints used for that are in the notes as well. But the other equipment that I'm painting is the same uh, for both. You can see me using uh, light mud, Panzerace's light mud with green grey as a highlight for the trousers. I also use deck tan as a highlight for the um, green grey, like for instance on the headband here. It's a nice bright highlight which you can push as much as you want by adding more or less. Now the, any area that's going to be black or grey has been given an undercoat of black. Then the boots for instance have been given an under, uh, a, a highlight rather of uh, German camel grey and that's also been used on the metallic areas such as the rifle, the cap on the water bottle, the mess tin and then the boots don't get any further highlight but I use London grey to highlight, just give a little metallic sheen to the other metallic areas so that they catch the eye and we get a metallic sheen without actually having to use metallic paint which can kind of imbalance things on such a small figure. I use German Camel Medium Brown for most of the brown areas on the uniform but then highlight them differently so that you get a much much different kind of finish. I use orange brown for the leathery areas and uh, you, uh, new wood sorry, for the uh, more sort of fabric-y kind of areas and then I use the new wood again for, sorry old wood not new wood, um, for the ammunition pouches and the bread bag. So that's old wood for the ammunition pouches and bread bag and highlighted with a little bit of Iraqi sand. That really helps to make it pop. And then I am using the new wood for the rifle. It's um, a brown colour that is going to stand out from the rest of the figure but still look brown. If you use a darker brown figure then it might just sink into it and we need that contrast. And then I'm using the German Camel Beige again over um, an undercoat of US Field Drab and a highlight of deck tan to paint the, um, the Panzerfaust and the rifle strap too. And you can see it's a nice bright figure that's not overly saturated, a nice bright colour that's not overly saturated. Now the skin was saddle brown as um, a base colour and then there's so many colours you could use here but I'm using game colour bronze flesh tone with a final tiny little highlight of flat flesh. That gives a nice warm warm depth to the skin with an eye catching highlight. And you see there the highlight going on and painting the faces is important. Nose, lips and then under the eyes and down the side of the mouth. And that's us done folks. Here's a quick look at some completed figures. There's lots more on our Facebook page folks. So if you don't follow us on Facebook, have a look and um, keep your eye out for our hobby updates for March 2 where I'll have a look around these guys uh, with the video camera as well. Thanks for watching.